we don't time for a program. So, okay, so this is a joint work with Tvika, Maya, Alex, and Omer. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to talk about SNARGs beyond no signaling. So, okay, yesterday, supposedly you heard a lot about SNARGs. So hopefully most of you know uh, what they are. So just one you know, minute of refresher. So in a SNARG, you have some computation, M and input X. You want to compute an output Y and you want to have a certificate, a succinct certificate that certifies the correctness of the computation. Uh, to do that, usually we assume that the, both the person issuing the certificate and the verifier that verifies it share some common random string. And we have kind of the usual completeness and soundness requirement, namely, uh, if you did the computation correctly, then you should be able to efficiently generate a certificate that verifies. And importantly, the certificate should be very succinct and so the time to so if the computation is t times take t time the, the certificate should be much smaller than t and verifying it should take much smaller than t otherwise there's not no point in outsourcing uh, this computation and uh, the soundness uh, is a computational soundness which says that it should be hard computationally hard to generate a fake certificate namely to generate a certificate for an incorrect a, outcome. And what I mean by hard, I want to say it's if you could do it, then you could break some cryptographic assumption. Okay, this was extremely fast, but I assume you guys are familiar. Yeah? Okay. So by the way, is there if if there are any questions, let me know. Yeah. Okay. So constructions. So you know, there's been in the last decade, uh, just uh, it's unbelievable the amount of work that's been done in this field. No, no, there's more, sorry, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, much more, as you'll see, and as you've heard yesterday. Uh, so it, a lot of this results, there's a, a, a theoretic, applied, and so on and so forth. The focus of this talk is on, con on the theoretical side, namely constructing SNARGs that are provably secure, under standard cryptographic assumptions. That's our goal, that's what we're after. Okay, so here's kind of the blueprint that we have. Yes. Oh, no, no, not for P, why P? No, no, P and beyond for NP actually. That's what we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no restrictions. So <clears throat> here's the blueprint that we have, that we know of for constructing these SNARGs. Okay, and this started with the joint work with the uh, Ron, uh, Ratbo, and Mutvan Raz. So here's the blueprint. The idea is the following. First, using cryptography to construct not a really sound proof, but what we call a quasi argument. It's quasi sound. What does that mean? It means I don't offer soundness really, but I promise you the guarantee is that given a prover who can convince me, I can use him to generate kind of uh, local consistency, not global correctness, but rather local consistency. Let me tell you what this means. What this means is, let's say I want to prove to you some tableau of a computation. This is tableau of a computation. What we can do is take the guarantees that you can take a cheating prover and use him to kind of, for every few locations, locals, for any few locations, the tableau, he will give, you can use him to generate an assignment to these locations. And this assignment locally will be consistent. So I can ask him these locations, let's say there's a gate, it's satisfied. I can ask him these locations, he'll give me or use them to generate values for these locations of the tableau, it'll be consistent. And importantly, it has this non-signaling property that if I ask him, you know, the middle one that was asked twice, the distribution and the answer he gives me is the same. So the distribution I get that I get from him and this element is the same whether it was asked with a yellow or whether it was asked with a red. Okay, so I can use the prover to get local consistency everywhere on the tableau. I can ask, use the prover to get assignment for any subset of locations in the tableau. The assignment will be local consistent. And for each kind of subset of the location, the distribution that he gives me is independent of the rest of the questions. Okay. So that's kind of the first part, this local consistency. And then there's kind of a generic way to argue to if you have local consistency, it implies global correctness. That's the blueprint. All the results we know essentially, loosely speaking, 
follows almost all results follow this blueprint. And this part is just information theoretic. Okay. And the first part is the crypto one. So one way we can do this part is just doing a what's called hash and barg, a batch argument, which again, I assume uh, you've all heard about yesterday. So the idea is use a hash that's somewhere extractable. So I'm gonna ask the prover, okay, put an assignment to everything on the tableau, assign values to everyone. So essentially compute the entire tableau, hash it down using a, a locally uh, extractable hash so I can extract a few locations and then give me a bar, a batch argument that all the gates are satisfied. And now we can argue that because all the gates are satisfied, we have kind of this local consistency uh, uh, requirement. And the size of this hash and bug depends on the locality. So I said, you get local consistency. We can choose how local we want to be. The locality can be very small. The locality can be big. And big locality will help the local the global guarantee, but will suffer in the size of the actual snark we get. Okay, so this is kind of uh, the blueprint that we have today for constructing snarks. Questions? Okay. So first thing you can ask, so I, I said, you know, you can go from uh, local to global. This is information theoretic. At first, one can think that, oh, going from local correctness to global should be trivial. trivial. And therefore we can, uh, you know, so, you know, once we have this local, we're done. Okay, it's not the case. It's really not the case. That's where all the problem is. But let me try to convert to, let's see why, why is it not, not trivial. So suppose you give me local co correct, local consistency. Okay, so I got the first part, it's locally consistent. It's good, it's correct. I get the second part, it's correct. So now these two are correct. So the third is correct. And I'll go up, 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 all right? Until I get to the end and the end would be correct. That was kind of when we started thinking about this, uh, uh, you know, 10 years ago, this is what we thought, and this, this should work. It doesn't, okay? This local to global is a real pain. And so let me tell you why, why one reason it doesn't work, one issue is that actually the bar, the hash and bar, I said it guarantees local consistency or local correctness. It doesn't, it guarantees it with probability one minus some negligible error. Because a bar, we know when you once use crypto, there's always negligible kind of uh, probability of error. So the local consistency is guaranteed only if probability one minus negligible. Okay, but now at some small, it's negligible. Okay, so this is let's say correct with all but negligible at some probability. Okay, the problem is for this to be correct, two things need to be correct. It's like think of it as an and. So now the when you go up the up layer, you're correct with all but two epsilon, because it's enough that one of the previous things were incorrect to ruin it, to ruin it for you. And when you go up the level, you get four, uh, essentially you'll get two to the depth blow up in air. And this kind of exponential blow up kills us. Okay, so this kind of shows even for P, even if you're only concerned with P, this kind of local to global does not work as is. Okay, of course, even for, N for NP, everything I said now makes no sense because what does it mean correct? There is no correct, it depends on the witness. And what can happen is maybe, you know, uh, let's say this is consistent with one witness, this is consistent with another witness. Now you add them together, it, it, nothing makes sense. So when you talk about NP or non-deterministic kind of computations, this local to global becomes a real nightmare. Okay, so this is kind of a, a big problem. Nevertheless, kind of the most of the work we did kind of in this setting is exactly on trying to go from local to global. And often it required kind of being creative with, with this step. Okay, so how, how did we do it? So, a, okay, so for example, in the original work, we talked only about a bounded space computations, and we said, let's be kind of extractable or lo the local will contain an entire kind of uh, a configuration or an entire layer or even two layers. 
And then kind of the idea is this way we won't, uh, we won't suffer the exponential curse because now we know, okay, local consistency promises, all of this is correct. And now we'll read these two because all of this is correct and we have local consistency, all of this is correct. And every time we just lose one epsilon as opposed to W. So that's one way to do it for bounded space, deterministic computation, because we talked about correctness until you go on top. This was later, we were able to show it for also non-deterministic uh, bounded space computations. I don't wanna go into it because I need to shorten my talk a bit, but essentially the idea was very similar so before, but now instead of talking about correctness, because correctness doesn't make sense in the non-deterministic settings, uh, we talk about kind of a notion of reachability. Is this layer reachable from the input or not? Is there any witness that will bring you up here or not? So it's kind of a different uh, notion, and but a similar argument. Uh, and also we managed to go beyond the, the bounded to all deterministic. To all for deterministic for all computations without any restriction on the space. And that actually, the way we avoided this kind of exponential curse that I talked about was using uh, uh, kind of a, some encoding of the tableau. I, we needed to encode the tableau in a way that even if you read a little part of a layer, it kind of, you can infer that, uh, you know, you can infer the entire correctness of an entire layer. So it required some encoding, low degree extension type of encoding for those who are familiar, but I don't wanna go into it. I guess the point I wanna make is that, you know, even though it seems like local to global ahead of time should be easy, actually dealing with it is, is a bit of a pain. Okay, and we don't know how to do it in general. And importantly, what I wanna focus is all these computations for which we managed to argue that local, correct, local consistency implies global correctness, that all these computations have what is called a non-signaling PCP. So I don't want to define what a non-signaling PCP is. It's a notion that was motivated by uh, quantum. Uh, but what uh, the point I want to make is non-signaling PCP is, is a restriction. For example, not all of NP, or we believe that not, not all of NP has a non-signaling PCP with, with a uh, few queries, okay, with a uh, local non-signing PCP. So I guess the point is all these have a uh, non-signing PCP and this is restrictive, okay? This already shows you you're stuck with uh, kind of, in, for, you're stuck with languages that have non-signing PCPs, which is not everything. So you won't be able to show, to argue, let's say snark for NP using this template. Snarks for all languages that have Good, good, yes, good. So Lali's question was, do we have a snarg for all languages that have non in PCP? And the answer is yes. Yes, uh, almost well, with uh, some statistical or computational version of non in PCP, but close enough. Yeah. So we have that and, and we're stuck with that essentially. Okay. Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> this is the answer, Lali. That's the best question, you know. So, uh, yeah, so we're stuck really, if and only if we, uh, we have a non-signal PCP with this framework. Okay, can we do better? So first of all, the answer is, well, if you were willing to assume IO, we know we can do all, or uh, indistinguishable obfuscation, we know we can do all of NP. We have snarks for NP, assuming indistinguishable obfuscation. So, oh, well, there's a few issues with this. First of all, it's only for non-adaptive soundness. So it's not really, you need to decide what your instance is before you're given the CRS. Uh, also, IO is not a falsifiable a, assumption. Uh, even though in recent work uh, by, Jane, by uh, Jane and Jean, they showed, they circumvented it for some subclass, specific subclass uh, in NP intersect co NP. Also, with CRS is large. There's no kind of you know knowledge extraction, other issues. But but you know the main kind of uh, issues is that it's not falsifiable and it's non-adaptive. But I want to say something about this this their work, the way they do snark using the I/O. Essentially, in their CRS, the common random stream, they have uh, obfuscation of a circuit. In this circuit, like in one shot, 
checks the entire computation for you. You get him a witness, it checks the entire thing in one track, gives you kind of a little, I don't know, signature, like a proof that if it, the witness is good or not. So these two techniques are very kind of different, <laughs> different spectrum. And the, the kind of the first blueprint I gave you, oh, the crypto, what it allows you to do is argue very local form of correctness. The uh, Sai Waters uh, snark, what it allows you to do is if you have a witness, you plug it into the, you give it to the CRS, like magically up comes like a little certificate, a little uh, uh, signature of the correctness. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But morally kind of, okay. So I want to kind of, I, I want to depart from this very local viewpoint and try to get, uh, get something else from my crypto beyond just this local, because this local kind of uh, constraints us. Okay, uh, so, or in other words, here's the, like the question uh, we, were, we were really after is, can we construct a SNARG with adaptive soundness, falsifiable assumption under poor computation that are not known to have non-signaling PCP? I'm not saying they don't, but at least I don't know how, you know, I, I don't know they do. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. It's not. I'm yeah. Uh, no. So I don't know. I, I I put here adaptive actually because you know what? Actually, when you go to NP, even if you go to to bargs, uh, like adaptivity becomes. You're right. You can think here is not adaptive. Okay, because even the, when you go start going to adaptivity uh, to an NP, there are other issues with. Uh, uh, with snarls that come up. So even, you know what, forget about the adaptive. Good, that's a great, thank you, uh, a great comment. Yeah, even without the, I, I wrote adaptive because we get it, but actually this question is interesting in the non-adaptive setting. Hey. You adaptive setting is generalist? Right, so in the adaptive setting, we know you can't do it for all NP, but you may have languages. So yeah, so Gentry Wicks, uh, lower bound says, Oh, you can have adaptive snarls under falsified false assumptions for all of NP. But you may have them for some languages that are, you know, don't have non in PCP. So yeah, the data for from the false problem of some the random memberships. Right? Exactly. So what, what Gentry Wix tells you is more specifically is that if a language is T hard, you can't kind of you know, if I give you a random instance, a random from some distribution in the language and out the language, if you can't distinguish it in time t, you won't have a snarg of size less than log t. And if, because there's languages that can be exponentially hard, maybe even two to the n hard, you can't have a snarg of size smaller than n. That's kind of what they say. But we have languages for, that uh, can be computed maybe in time two to the n to the epsilon, that don't have an answer in PCP. I want to snark from them of size n to the epsilon. So uh, yeah, ideally I want to get, I want to kiss Gentry Wicks. Okay, I want to kind of match their lower bound with an upper bound. And the question, can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you want to know the language? Uh, uh, so okay, you guys have really lovely questions. Hey, so what we show in particular is there exists a snarg for the class of monotone policy, policy batch NP. So let me tell you under a standard assumption, our CRS is monotone. So let me tell you what this class is. The class is, think of uh, actually a, okay, I don't want to go into detail, but here's the class. The class is uh, an instance contains, let's say, Pick some NP language. You can think of the language as being kind of a bunch of public keys or whatever NP language. And now I, an instance, so there's some NP language L. Now, and there's some policy F, <laughs> monotone policy F. And now I say that X1 of the XK is in the language. If I have witnesses that kind of satisfy the policy. So if there exists, this is one if and only if there's a witness for X1 being in the language, a witness. And if enough of them, you know, if I have enough witness that satisfy the monotone policy, then it's in the language. Yeah. Can we just think of like majority? Exactly, threshold. An yeah. example is just threshold. 
Okay, that's a good example to think about. Okay, if you have more than two witnesses, you're in the language. If you have less, you're outside the language. You have something to say, Tzvika? I feel like you're itching to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, uh, okay. So, so right. So, in other words, there is a monotone uh, policy F, and the output is one. If you know, you, for each one, you uh, B one is one if it's in the language, zero otherwise, and you it's in the language. It's uh, this this X's are in the language if the output is one. Do you care about the complexity of this? Uh, yeah, I, um, so you, you should think about F as a post, I mean, not really, but I usually would think of F as polynomial, because we usually want to think of the prover as polynomial. So when I say, uh, yeah, you can, I don't care about No, but it could be, you know, that it doesn't have a polynomial size, a monotone circuit. So, uh, no, I want to think of it as having monotone. I think I'm thinking of it as having a polynomial size monotone circuit. Okay. I think that that's the mindset you should be in. I, we can, you can generalize it. I don't think we're using it, but that's kind of the uh, how we should think about it. Yeah. So as it's up for a bounded space, then this entire thing would be in one terminus of bounded space. So right, exactly. Good. So it right. So if F was bounded space, we can use we can use prior results. A Oops, where, where did we miss Lou? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, adaptively skip, so <laughs> based on a, a, okay, yeah, there's some, um, there's uh, parameters, but I think they're not uh, that uh, interesting. Um, okay, not only, so uh, Ron's comment was, if it was bounded space, couldn't you do it using, because we have bounded space, non-deterministic snarks, the answer is yes. Moreover, we can also do it if the depth is small. So let me give you this as a warm up because it will help us understand what's going on. So let's say, suppose first that you're okay with the snarg that grows with the depth of the, the circuit F. So I have this function F in the circuit. Suppose you're okay paying the snarg being as big as the depth D. Do you have a question? Why the gender weeks? Why do we have a chance to do that? I mean, the oh, to this? Sorry. Okay. Our, our snarg here. So, this is a generalization of a barg. So, we heard yesterday barg. A barg says it's like just a conjunction. Everything is in the language. And the size of the snarg here, similar to the snarg of a barg, grows with the length of one witness mm. times some power. So, this is why you're, you're right. If it was smaller than one witness, you would be, it would okay. be impossible. Yeah. So this is, you can think of it as just a generalization of bugs. So what is M here? M is one witness length, sorry. M, M is the length of one, one witness. Okay, and we prove this, we get this not assuming essentially, essentially a bug. We use a bug to construct this. So essentially we say, if you have a bug, you can generalize it to any monotone a uh, formula. Yeah. And what is lambda? It's a security parameter. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, uh, yeah, security parameter. Why does this monotone policy not have non signaling PCP? Oh, uh, okay. We don't know that it, that it has. I'm not saying it doesn't, but we don't know that it has. And I'll explain to you why in a bit. Okay. It, you know, maybe, okay. Uh, no, let me take it offline. We don't know that it has. Thank you. Does a conjunction have the no signaling PCP? Well, yeah, so okay, the question was a conjunction, and the answer is yes, and I'll explain actually with the depth why. Actually, the depth is if you're willing to go with the depth, you have an absolute PCP with locality that goes with the depth, and that's why conjunction has because conjunction has very small locality. No, but you can you can reproduce the can you reproduce the bar result by saying, Oh, here's a non signal PCP, let's uh, just apply our. Uh, out the, the blueprint from before. No, no, I, 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 no well, okay, sorry. To use a non signaling PCP, I need to use a barg. I using just a non signaling PCP, I have a privately verified. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I, I don't know how to come. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Maybe I didn't understand your question. So the, the, the point here is that there's there's languages that don't have uh, like uh, there's this outline say construct a no signal PCP, convert it into uh, and it's not it's not. Yeah. So right, using the box. Now we have a class of languages, right? That is just uh, um, like a conjunction of, of, uh, sort of, mm -hmm. of languages or right, right. instances. Um, and uh, my question, and for this, we actually know, right? We saw these constructions of barks and yeah. so on, right? 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but you cannot cast these constructions as saying first construct, first have a no signal. No, 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 of course not. No, no, I don't so know how. So we have an example. So we already have an example. Of no, the, uh, but, but I don't know how to construct. A, I'm not saying it's easy to construct a bar if you give me a no signal in PCP. But all I'm saying is the, the conjunction of NP witnesses, it does have a no signal in PCP. It, has, it does have a notion in GTP. Actually, our work on, on bargs in the non-adaptive setting and the non and the, the and the private verifiable setting, right? We had bargs in the private verifiable setting. We started from non in PCP. So bar, I mean uh, a conjunction, the conjunction of NP, it does have a non in PCP. I'm not saying it's easy given us to construct bars. I'm not saying that. You know the way the way uh, CJJ constructed bars was not by a necessarily construct. You know, not it's not trivial giving an answer in PCP. That's for sure not the construction actually involved for your meal. Uh, they're totally different. Mm -hmm. But it does have an answer in PCP. That language has an answer in PCP. So all our snobs probably are for languages that are known to have an answer in PCP. That's different than saying that given an answer in PCP, it's easy to construct them. Okay, great. Okay, so. Let me first show you as a warm up how to construct SNARGs for these monotone batch NP, uh, where you're okay with the SNARG growing with the depth. It will just kind of help us a little bit. So, the idea let's do exactly from the previous paradigm the hash and bar paradigm to get local consistency and then go to global consistency. So, that's what we do. Okay, and how do we go? So, we get local consistency. And we go to global to global correctness, and we pay. So how how does it work? We say, you know, there. So each one there's the kind of the real bit that says, is it in the language? Is it not in the language? And now the local, I, my locality will be kind of let's say in one. In, I'll read an entire thing, and it will be locally consistent, so correct. So each little kind of circuit that checks validity of one witness will be correct. And so the probability that I'll have here a false one, let's like say it's supposed to be zero, it's not in the language, but I got a false one, is only epsilon. It's small because uh, that's the error guarantee. And then I'll go up, 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 two epsilon, four epsilon. Eventually I'll get a false one with probability 2D times epsilon, exactly as before. And is, now, so if epsilon is very, very small, smaller than two to the minus D, or significantly smaller, then I won't have a false one, right? So if epsilon is two to the d times negligible, then the probability of a false one is negligible, and that implies correctness because I'm not gonna, you know, uh, what they'll what they'll prove me here is not false, not not a false one. False zero is okay; it just means they didn't prove, but not a false one. Okay, and indeed, this thing does have an unsigning PCP with locality that is d. We know that it's kind of by, by parallel. We just need to repeat it d times to boost kind of the epsilon. And uh, so this is known. Okay, I don't want to get into exactly, but, but, but uh, and indeed, I, I just went through the local to global paradigm. So you shouldn't be surprised. I told you this paradigm, you're stuck with non signal. Okay, so how do we depart from this blueprint is the question. And here's the main idea. So recall the problem with this blueprint is that we use the crypto only to help, only to guarantee local consistency. That's all we got from the crypto. The rest was information theoretic. I want to use the crypto to get more. If that's all we get, we know we're stuck with non-signaling. So one, I want to use the crypto to gain more. What am I going to get? I'm going to get local consistency with some global uh, predicate. So my, in the quasi-argument, that I in what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be able to extract from the prover, not just little kind of local things like uh, I'm sure are local consistent. I'm also gonna be able to extract, or what I wanna be able to extract is some global predicate of the entire tableau. <coughs> and I, with the guarantee, not only that I have local consistency, but this local thing that I extracted is consistent with the global predicate. So that's exactly what we do. We use crypto to get more. We get local consistency, and we're able to extract a predicate. And the low, and we have the guarantee that this the local consistency is not just consistent with its own local self; it's also consistent with the global predicate. And now, 
our, our job here is for the information theoretic job is easier because now I need to argue that local consistency that is consistent with the global predicate that implies global correctness. So I, I get more from the crypto and now the information, it, it makes the information theoretic part easier. So that's kind of how we depart from the previous blue, uh, from the previous blueprint. And recall how to, so how do we get this kind of, how do we use crypto to get more? So before, as I said, to get the quasi argument, we used hash and borrow, okay? And this hash is some more extractable hash. So you can extract from the hash a few locations. That was uh, the, the guarantee. <clears throat> now, when we want to get a quasi argument with global predicate extraction, instead of using a somewhere extractable hash, we're going to use a new notion that we call a predicate extractable hash. So now I'm not with this hash, I, it's the same hash, local opening, you can open kind of locally efficient like a Merkle tree. But in addition, you can use a tractor to extract from the hash value, not just some XI in the leaves, but some global predicate and the entire input. Yeah. This is also Actually, this is not for monotone. This part, forget about the monotone. This is, think of this as a general blue, new blueprint. I don't think that this is only relevant for the monotone. The monotone was an example where this blueprint is used, but this is a general blueprint, okay? That I, uh, I wanna propose. Okay, <clears throat> so good. So again, with a sum extractable hash, we can extract a bit of the input or a few bits if we wanna repeat. With a predicate extractable hash, we can extract a global predicate of the entire input. Exactly. So first you can say, can we do it for any predicate? Uh, right? That's a good question. Uh, I'll answer that in the next slide. Uh, but, but just to say that, uh, that why, why this seems like a good idea to construct is because this uh, one example is we can avoid. So I, I mentioned that if, uh, you know, if you're willing to pay with that, with the, with the depth D, you could have already, you could have gotten a star by, you know, fine, you, you pay with exponential kind of, uh, exponentially in the depth. And the idea to avoid this exponential price by extracting a global predicate that certifies kind of, in some sense, the correctness of an entire layer, but not really correctness. Correctness is not the right word, because what does it mean correctness? Really what it, what it certifies is there are no false ones in an entire layer. That's what we need to, we're worried that somewhere the adversary managed to put a one where it's supposed to be zero. And so we're gonna do a predicate that kind of ensures layer by layer that in this layer, there are no false ones. And since in the entire layer, there is no false one, then the next layer, there cannot be a false one with, and because we argued on the entire layer, entire layer of the circuit, entire layer of the circuit. And because we can argue something about the entire layer of the circuit uh, by one predicate, we kind of avoid this exponential curse. Because we can be in the circuit, it doesn't have to be formula, right? Yeah, any circuit, yeah, any circuit, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, Rand, to your question, in the uh, so far, what we, in, at least in the paper that we wrote, where we construct a predicate extractable hash for a specific class of predicate, the for in particular for bit fixing predicates, we can actually do it more generally for arbitrary kind of bounded, more general, but it, the definition there is subtle. So, but it, it can be generalized. This is just for an example for the specific uh, result. So as you, as you, yes, actually, yes. In the actually, okay. Let me add, so Shafi was saying, when you do the hash, you know which predicate, yes. Moreover, let me kind of, uh, let me give you an intuition in some sense, the CRS or the hash key for the hash function will be an encryption of the predicate. So when I tell you, okay, you, you, I want you to hash your input X. Here's your hash key. Your hash key will include an encryption of the predicate. But that was a, crucially doesn't know what the predicate is. Crucially does not know what that is. He does not learn the predicate, but it's encrypted. And now when you compute the hash function, the, very, the construction is very similar to the construction of, of uh, some acceptable hash of Daniel, where the adversity, uh, when you compute the function, you kind of compute it kind of layer by layer. And at the end, 
you're kind of computing the predicate in an encrypted form for me. This is very high level. Okay, for what well, actually we have it for general, but for we can do it not just for bit fixing, but uh, what the outline I just mentioned is for bit fixing. Well, it, is, it, it is a bit, uh, yeah, you're saying the correlation, yeah, yeah, it's, it does have a little bit of actually, I was thinking about it if there's more deep relation between the two. Okay, actually, I see I'm out of time. So let me not get into the details. But uh, essentially, for those who want some extractable hashes, you want to imitate it, the same definition, everything with predicate instead. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, and okay, so let me just summarize. I don't want to eat into your lunch. So, what, what uh, we did in this work is we constructed, uh, kind of, we proposed a new framework for constructing SNARGs. Uh, whereas the previous framework was hash and bar, uh, the, what we propose, what we uh, do is we do a, or the previous was some extractable hash and bar. Uh, we propose to do a predicate extractable hash and bar. Uh, this allows us to get kind of from the cheating prover, not a quasi argument, but this augmented type of quasi argument that has kind of a, a global uh, predicate extraction. And now we want to argue that this kind of augmented quasi argument implies global correctness. And again, this part is information theoretic. We just use the crypto to help us get more from the quasi argument in the hope that it will give us global correctness. And indeed, just uh, um, and we use this to get snarks from Anatan uh, batch NP. I just want to mention uh, about uh, a Moni's question that for formulas, if, if you restricted the function to formulas, then we do know uh, non-signaling PCP for that language. But once you allow any circuit, we do not know of a non-signaling PCP for that language. So that's kind of our an example, a proof of concept that there's something new here that we didn't know how to do before. We kind of broke this paradigm that we had before. Okay, so uh, as I said, this is uh, the, the, um, I view the monotone batch NP is just one example for why this, uh, this paradigm is useful, but the hope is to use this framework to construct SNARGs for other NP computations, not just for batch NP, uh, for uh, monoton batch. And for that, uh, we will need to construct a predicate extractable hash that doesn't do, is not like for the specific bit fixing, which was, the bit fixing was very important for the specific application of monoton batch. Uh, more generally, you probably want some kind of to check kind of that a layer is kind of reachable or correct or pseudo reachable. You, you need some kind of, you want the predicate to kind of commit or, or to extract something that says this entire layer is good in some sense. And then for, therefore the next layer is good. And what good is what we call like pseudo reachable. I think it may depend on the language, but that's kind of the, the uh, generic framework. And of course the grand challenge is to do it for all of NP. I don't think actually this will go take us that far, but hopefully we'll get more than what we got here. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm at the top. <laughs> well, yeah, that's amazing. Well, thanks, uh, Elegan, and also for the discussion. And if there are any questions, quick questions that we have, like, what are the final assumptions? What, what are the assumptions? The assumptions are essentially the existence of bar. So by now, uh, yeah. some yeah. sort of BDH, LWE, uh, yeah. But you also need a feature. And a feature. Sorry. And a feature. I forgot that. And a feature. Sorry. Sorry. No. Yeah. A feature. Not a feature. It's about the global political. It's a good fact. You put in an encryption. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. So we're out for lunch at 2 p.m. And Lee Chen will a really interesting tutorial and a talk using derealization assumptions. Thank <laughs> you.